Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Battle of Ontario Hockey Podcast, featuring a Senators fan and a Leafs fan. We're here to talk about your two favorite teams, the rest of the NHL, local hockey, hockey all around the world, and to bring back memories from your favorite hockey teams and players. If you love the Leafs, Sens, B-Sens, NHL, or any other hockey, including the late Belleville Bulls, you are going to want to tune into our podcast. The gloves are off, the buckets are spinning, let's get the chirps flying. Welcome to the Boo Club! Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Battle of Ontario Hockey Podcast. The Boo Club, right Flemsky? Good to be back, buddy. Good to be back, I don't know about that hat you got going on there, but this one sure looks sharp. Um, So what episode is this? this? Episode (laughs) 5. Episode (laughs) 5, Season 2 of the Boo Club's Hockey Podcast. Um, This one is brought to you by A1 Electrical. Shout out to uh, to Maddie and his uh, and his family. Um, if you're looking for any electrical work, um, whether you know you're you're a home builder and you're building houses, I know they do a lot of that, or just electrical work at your house, um, anything like that, give these guys a call. They're professionals. They've been in the industry for a very very long time, and they're awesome to deal with. Great people. Shout out to Maddie for supporting us. He's done this a couple times. I know he was supposed to play in our first golf tournament actually as well. Um, he did get injured the day before, but uh, still a great guy. So uh, thanks to to uh, the Lola Barges, I guess. Um, for their uh, for their help with pay it forward sports and yeah. boo club sports for sure. So yeah, I had these guys out to do a, an ESA thing, like an electrical safety association or whatever. Uh, for my garage, like I had a bunch of problems. With. Maddie came out; he, they were great. They fixed it in like half a day, and uh, just great guys to deal with. So if you're looking for anything uh, residential or small construction, give A1 Electrical a call. But uh, how's it going, Brokey? What's going on today, buddy? Well, it's uh, it's finally official. We haven't uh, we have we've talked about this, but it, it's been a few years. I think almost. Uh, well, over three years, I think now, Ottawa finally has a captain. Yeah. Brady Kachuk. Um, there's absolutely, in my household, there's absolutely zero surprise. When I found it out, actually, my buddy Adam Finley, Finner, shout out to Finner, party at Finner's now. Uh, but um, uh, Finner, thanks, buddy, uh, for giving me the news there. I was working there last week, and but to me, it was absolutely no surprise. It was a no brainer. I would have been actually shocked if it went to anywhere else. I mean, if Shabbat, nothing against Shabbat or anybody else, but I mean, he's the guy, he's the leader, he's the, the guy they've been pumping just the way he plays the style of game. Um, so, so it's just nice to, I think it's nice to done and Ottawa has a captain and hopefully they can move forward because they've been playing like dog shit, at least defensively the last two weeks, which we'll get into here um, during the podcast. But uh, yeah, buddy, we got a captain. Um, Toronto's got a captain, Johnny Deverest scored the other night and uh, Saturday night. And uh, it was a little controversial, wasn't it? Uh, it was, yeah. Let's, Let's start with something else, though, because uh, okay, we sorry. always start we always start with the Sens and Leafs, and I've just really like I've, I saw this highlight on Saturday, but I've been really been watching oh. over the past like couple of days. I wanted to talk about the Connor McDavid goal against the New York Rangers the other night when he goes in one on a four. second. Hold on, who? Yeah. Connor McDavid. Oh, I thought you're it's Connor McDavid or Connor McJesus because that's all <laughs> fucking for uh, my just, uh, Bible study followers, but. Yeah, Connor McJesus is his name because he's that good. He's the best. He's the best in the game without a doubt. Just just watching that play, like I just keep thinking, like everyone's like, that's a goal of the year. I don't think like that may be one of the best goals I've ever seen legitimately. Like I can't think of a better goal than that. Like just just everything, like kind of like the moment to the celebration. Like it's a big night. Like it's Kevin Lowe's uh, jersey retirement and like coming back like that to get a big win. But just how he like just how he shows the patience, A, at the blue line, like he kind of does a little stutter step. And then when he gets through the first two guys, he's kind of like in the eye of the storm. Like he's between, there's two guys behind him, two in front of him. And he just has the patience. Like he doesn't stick handle. He just keeps the puck on his on his stick for just that split second and figures out what he's going to do, makes his move and just goes in and bury it. Like it was just, there were so many cool things that happened within like a two or three second window that he did there. Like his head doesn't move the whole time. Such a good fucking goal. Like, oh, Unreal. Like I just, I flip out every time I watch that goal. I got to say that's probably one of like the best five or 10 goals of all time. Like I can't think of any off the top of my head that are, that are that much better. Like you always think of the Mario one where he walks Ray Bork and like puts it through his feet, man, McDavid's is borderline just as good, if not better. Like that is just a phenomenal play. And 
just shown why he's the best player in the world. Like that was so unreal. I don't know what you thought about it, but I fucking well, love hundred percent. And, and you caught me. You, I was trying to cut in there to say my point, but you stole it from me. <laughs> um, the guy I wanted to compare him to was Mario Lemieux because, yeah. and the, the, the Bork one, but he had a couple others that he he's did, had yeah. all the years. And, mm-hmm. and Lemieux was one of those guys that when he wasn't good, like stops and start getting going, but when he got his speed going and he's got a handle on that puck, that's kind of where you can compare the, the Lemieux to, to maybe a McDavid now where, where they, they had some of those goals, right? Mm-hmm. Um, with going at, at a, a speed, especially in Lemieux's earlier in his career. Later in his career, he played a little bit different style. But, uh, but no, I mean, do, do you remember um, there was a guy on, uh, on one of the podcasts that they have in Belleville last year, and he said, that, uh, he said that Matthews was better than McDavid. Do you remember that? I think that might have been on the Blue Club podcast. You think so? All right? Do you remember that? Oh, well, yes, people. Check back to season one of the Battle of Ontario <laughs> Hockey podcast because Fleming the Chump said that Matthews was better than McDavid, McJesus. Well, and guess what? He much, his words. So how's how much were we drinking before the podcast at that time? Well, like, I don't know. I must have been. Were you drinking? You in the Senate, not me. <laughs> Man, <laughs> just that goal is just like so unreal. Like, oh, I just there's not even any words you can put to it. Like, just so phenomenal. Just the patience, the speed. It's completely different from the Muse goal. Like, like you said, like the Mew, like almost mesmerizes you. Like he puts the, the puck way out here, brings it back in, kind of thing. McDavid just so goddamn fast that if you take one step and what he does. He gets you on your pivot kind of thing. Like when you make that one step sideways, he catches you right at that exact moment. Like it's the perfect timing, how he catches guys kind of on the crossover, kind of like he did Riley last year. Like as soon as Riley moves that right skate, like tries to cross over from right to left, he breaks, right? Like just that that exact time. Yeah. So, was, <laughs> what's that? Seven and a half million dollars getting his ankle broken. <laughs> hey, I guess I, it's only five million when it happened, but yeah, um, no, I just had to say that because he just got signed. But uh, <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, there's just there's just no doubt in the world. I mean, and I, we've all kind of said it. Um, and he's the best in the world without a doubt. I mean, you can still have your Crosby and your Obi lovers, and, and Obi's phenomenal this year, scoring goals off right center, and he's the best goal scorer of all time. But just right now, as far as skill wise and the way they're playing the game and how much there are to their team. I mean, there's just nobody better. And the next step for me is it's Phil McKinnon. I still think that guy's got, you know, he could probably pull something off like that, but we haven't seen it quite like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so, I mean, but it's awesome. Isn't that what it's about, right? Like mm-hmm. seeing those plays and, you know, that's what I love about it. I'd rather ha- ha- see some, a goal like that than some guy get haul down a hook down and, you know, score a garbage goal. Right. Which is kind of the old style of hockey, which I know you still love, but I mean, I just, it was phenomenal. Like the speed he has and there's guys out there that are fast and there's a guy in Ottawa that's fast, but he can't, he's got no hands. He can't yeah. keep up. Right. Yeah. Like forming, just, just throwing that out there, like a Formington, he just, the guy can't score because he doesn't have hands. It's yeah. one thing to have speed, but mm-hmm. when you, you have a guy like, like McDavid, McJesus with, with the hands to go with it. That's why he's the best in the world. Without, oh, yeah. without question. Yeah, for sure. There are tons of guys with speed. And even it's not even so much like the, the ability to stick handle when you're going fast. It's just your hockey IQ too. Like he knows, he knows exactly when to just take his time, when to step on the gas, like, Oh, such a sick goal. And like dry sidle berries in overtime too. Like just what a cool game to see. Like what a comeback for Edmonton. And uh, that's a, that's a, that's a big win for a team right there. When your two superstars get going like that. So uh, watch out for Edmonton. They may be rolling. I want to put a comparison out here, too, to to, uh, 30 years ago. I guess it would be approximately 30-year range. But let's say we got Dreisaitl and uh, and McJesus, and we've got Lemieux and Yager. Yeah. You know, um, they're kind of – they got a lot of similarities, and and they were top two in the league at the time. And then, you know, they won a couple – two cups, right? Am I right with that? 90-91? I'm not Um, 100% sure on that. That's – I think 90 and 91. I, I would almost bet on that. It might be 91, 92, but I'm mm-hmm. pretty sure they won two cups in a row. Um, now, your thoughts, can, can that same thing happen with Edmonton, with these two stars? What's your thoughts on, on their process moving forward? And like, are they going to be able to do some damage, if not win a cup in the next few years here? You know what? So, can they be the best one and two player in the league? Yeah, they definitely can. And they might already be. Like, it's really, I don't know, different eras. Like, it's really hard to tell. Like, they're they're different players completely, right? Like, these oh, yeah. guys are both quick. Like Lemieux and Yager weren't really known for their speed. Like they were uh, like, you know, they both had unreal dangles, but uh, just different players. Can they be the best players in the world? Like both of them on the same team? Yes. Can they win a Stanley cup? I think as we've seen the past few years is that doesn't just come down to your, your one or two players. Right. I think Edmonton, the big key is going to be their defense and goalie goaltending. And uh, to be honest, 
they made some big improvements on defense. Like I know they uh, they lost Larson, but they go and get a winner like Duncan Keith. I think that's a really big ad for them. Uh, Darnell Nurse steps up with that huge contract. So they have some legitimate defensemen right now in that system in the lineup. And it's going to come down to the secondary players. They go and get a guy like Hyman as well to kind of chip in. Uh, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, they got Cassian. But uh, if they can keep the puck out of the net with that top four defense, th they're going to be a tough team to beat. And they got Nurse, they got Barry, uh, Keith and CC are actually their second pair. So two uh, two old right shot defensemen that were playing for the Leafs that couldn't hack it are now uh, in the top four for Edmonton. So we'll see how that plays out. Can they win a cup? They have the, two of the top five best players in the world. They can 100% win a cup. Can they win it with those two alone? No, and I think we've seen that. Like they, they got dusted by Winnipeg last year. They didn't have the depth. They're going to have to take another run at it this year. What are your thoughts on it? Well, I, I think at the end of the day, I think it's a learning curve. And I think I, I can kind of compare them to, to the Leafs where one of these years they got, you got to think they're going to break through. They're going to get a bounce. I mean, even if you look at the Montreal series with Toronto last year and you look at if Toronto would have got a bounce to the other way, especially, you know, game seven or even game six, I mean, the series is over, right? And, and it just didn't go their way. And maybe one of these times it does. Um, and then it gets them past that hump. Um, and I think the pickups that, because the difference for me to Toronto to Edmonton is I don't like the, what Toronto's picked up. I think they've lost. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that they had more, like they have, they have got four or five, they had four or five top guys rather than two yeah. at the time. So, but uh, just like, like the, the, uh, the D you're talking about Keith, I mean, he's not what he was. There's no, no question, but can he bring a leadership and a different type of role that they missed mm -hmm. um, to, to teach these young kids how to win in the playoffs. And I yeah. think if he can do that and even just chip in and he's not going to play 40 minutes like he did back yeah. in 2009 or 10 when they won the cup, you know, in 13. But uh, if he can put in like 15 minutes and, and you know, push Nurse and uh, CeCe and, um, and Barry and teach these guys, then that'll be huge for them on the back end. Um, goalie, I mean, goalies comes down to who gets hot in the playoffs. We know yeah. that. And hot hot right now too, Fredmonton. You're going to score. You're going to score. You're, sorry, you're going to win. Um, if you don't, you got a goalie that kind of isn't hundred percent healthy or he's just not feeling it. You're not going to win it. And, and so that is one aspect. The other aspect I like up, uh, up front and I've said this many times, the Hyman pickup, I think that's only going to help him huge, especially come playoff time, as long as everybody's healthy. So I I'm expecting them to, to do well this year in the playoffs. Um, I, I, I like, I kind of, what's the word I want to use? I, I kind of understand and, and um, shoot, I, I'm, I'm losing my, uh, my word here, but like, I guess the word is where Edmonton like is doing, has being successful. Mm -hmm. I get it. And I, I think it's something that's going to last where say a team like Calgary's having a lot of success to me. I think that's going to come down a little bit. I think they're yeah. just a little bit hot. What's the word I'm looking for? Sustainable. Here? Well, yeah, that's not the word I'm looking for. But anyways, yeah, like I think Edmonton can sustain being a really, really good team and a, and a top five, eight team in the league this year, you know, maybe top five all year. Where yeah. Calgary, I don't see it. I mean, I think Calgary's make the playoffs and they could have a chance to do something in the playoffs, but I just don't see them as the top tier team right away. I just yep. think they're hot and you know how teams get hot. I mean, Ottawa got hot last year, the last 20 games, you know, they won like yep. or maybe the last 15. I mean, it can happen to anybody, right? So, but I, I do like their chances in the playoffs for the next few years. I really do. I think, yeah. you know, they might have to fill a piece in here or there. Um, might have to, you know, especially come trade deadline. But uh, it'll be interesting to see how they do uh, in the playoffs this year. And, and you know, I love, uh, I just love, you know, the look on McDavid's face after that goal. Yeah, I know. Eh? And didn't he say something to the reporter? Like, you know, I'm here. I get paid big money to score big goals or something. Yeah, like he that. said that. That's why I get paid that's this much like, money. Yeah. Yeah, and it's like. But it's true. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, I was going to chirp Marner and the boys there, um, but uh, they have been having a lot of success the last four games. <laughs> five, five games. Five games now. So Toronto's on a on a hot streak. So maybe we can take it to there. What do you think, bud? Yeah, and then they're, uh, they're playing tonight too. One thing I just wanted to say just before we move on about like the bounces in the playoffs is nothing emphasizes that more than the Washington Capitals in the year they won. So the Capitals are kind of like the Leafs and, and so, kind of like the Oilers. Like they could never get past the second round, right? It seemed like every year they would lose to Pittsburgh and it didn't really matter what they did. They could never, you know, they got past the first round, but they never, they never got over the hump. They never made it to the dance. And then the year they won the Stanley cup, Brokey, do you remember they were down, they lost the first two games of the playoffs at home to Columbus yeah. and game three, they go into double overtime and they score a goal off the Columbus's defenseman's foot. 
to win game three. And that just starts the ball rolling. That's the Imagine bounce they need. Away. That, you got that? all three? Yeah, exactly. That's the bounce they need right there to get them over the hump. It gives them that little bit of momentum, and there they go. They're off the races, and they win the Stanley Cup, right? So yep. hockey truly is a game of inches and a game of bounces, right? Like we can say, you know, Edmund's going to make it past the first round. Hey, if there's a real bad bounce that goes one way or the other, like the, the margin for error is so slim that, uh, you know, any team could beat any team on any given night, and we've seen that tons of times. So there's no guarantee to say the Edmonton or the Leafs are going to make it past the first round. Just uh, It's a game of inches, and it's a game of bounces. But, uh, yeah, do you want to move into the Leafs here, Brokey, a little bit? Yeah, let's move into the Leafs since we were kind of talking so, about them and doing a little yeah, bit of comparison so, uh, there. So, 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 so hold on, just before, just before you start, I just want to say one thing. We yeah. missed our podcast last week. We were going to do it, and it got delayed, and then it didn't happen. So we do apologize for that for our followers. But Fleming didn't want to do it the one day because he wanted to see the Leafs play. He was all pissed off about them. And he's like, I don't want to chirp them. And then they I wanted them. to watch the game. So then, yeah, true enough. So since then, they've won five games. So yeah. um, that means I'm surprised we're doing a podcast tonight because then they haven't they've been winning. But They're anyway, you right were going to rant. You're gonna, we're going to go all over them and chirp. But now I guess it's the opposite. So let's hear it. Well, I did I did give them their chirp after when they lost to Pittsburgh there that game. But uh, no, I mean – there's, there's nothing else to say besides the Leafs are hot right now. And and let's face it, the Leafs are hot because the big boys are rolling. I think I think I heard a stat today that says, I think, between the, the big four, I think they've scored the Leafs like last nine goals or something like that, or last like 11 goals, like something ridiculous. So between Matthews, Marner, Nylander, and uh, Tavares, they, they've got their last, you know, I don't know the exact stat, nine or 11 goals in a row. So like we were saying before, when the big boys go, the Leafs are tough to beat. And when you keep them in check, it may be an easy night for you, right? Uh, Campbell's playing good. Let's. Go, I want to dive in a little deeper. I kind of wanted to recap the last uh, couple of games. So I think I think a big thing to note here is when they beat Tampa Bay, they beat Tampa Bay 2-1 the other night. And just so many things went right and wrong in that game. Like, they kind of shit the bed a little bit in the third period. I think Campbell makes three breakaway saves in, like, a five-minute period and the at the start of the third. And finally, the Leafs break through with, like, I think a minute left, they tie the game up, right? Going to overtime, they get that momentum and win. So – I thought that was a really big thing. Campbell with the saves down the stretch. I mean, he keeps him in the game. And there is, there is a vocal crowd in Leafs Nation that says, like, Campbell's not the guy. And, you know, I think it's, it's hard to say with only, like, let's be serious. He's probably only been a starting goalie for, for four months in the NHL, right? Do you give him that four, do you give him that four or five-year contract, try to lock him up now and say, you know, you're our guy, you're at least our 1A, or do you wait? But uh, I think Campbell right now, like, he's proving, he's proven the last, the last four months that he's the number one goal in the NHL. He's got a goals against average of under two. That's phenomenal. It's lights out. It may not always look pretty. It may not look the best, but he's putting up numbers when it matters, and, and I think that's what you need to do. Um, and then we move into the Boston game tonight. So one thing I thought about this Boston game was it was a game the Maple Leafs needed, and I don't think they've had a game like that since, since, since before COVID. Boston came out, and they tried to bully the Leafs. They tried to hit the Leafs. They tried to stick the Leafs. They slashed them, and they did everything they could to kind of get under their skin and make it a dirty, kind of chippier game. The Leafs obliged a little bit. They responded, but they kept going with their speed. And I think when Boston started running around, the Leafs really capitalized on that. So maybe maybe that's not the game to play against the Leafs kind of thing is because when when they get moving, when they get skating, when you're taking runs and get out of position on them, that's when they're dangerous. Maybe it's a little easier to kind of, kind of trap the Leafs, I would think. But uh, I think it's a game the Leafs needed. The young kids really stepped up. I thought Sandine had a great game. Lilligren has a great game. So uh, I don't even know this, but Justin Hall – a guy they protected in the expansion draft hasn't played in the last four games, been a healthy scratch. Uh, maybe something by Keith to, uh, to get the boys going. Right. It's always, it's always neat to say, uh, to say, what are you going to do? You're going to scratch guys. And they always scratch fourth liners. He scratched the guy that's been in the lineup for two straight years that was protecting the expansion draft and, and the team answered. So I think Keith kind of started rattling everybody's cages, shakes up the line, sits hall and, uh, and he gets some results out of it. So I think that's a good job by him. And I think, uh, you know, maybe it would be nice to push that button a little earlier, but uh, it's nice to see. Uh, nice to see it's working for now. Well, I think I think at the end of the day, nothing's changed, and and I hate to sound negative, but I mean everything you said, we've talked about this before. I mean, in the playoffs and in a, in a tough game, you, nobody in their right mind is ever going to play run and gun with the Toronto Maple Leafs. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. look at their scores. I mean, this is the same thing that we and you compared to the Washington Capitals. I mean, the, how long? How many years did the Washington Capitals dominate the regular season when the president? It was born yeah, it felt yeah. like it, didn't it? Yeah. And, then, yeah. <laughs> and then they couldn't get it done in the playoffs, and they mm-hmm. might win the odd round, but they couldn't get past the second round. But what yep. were they? They were running gun team. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, you can't play to win 6-5 every night mm-hmm. or 6-4. You know what I mean? And and that, and 
So a hundred percent Tampa Bay is going to play that way and not want to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and good teams are, and that's why Tampa's won cups. Um, I wouldn't, but, I wouldn't uh, say necessarily that they're playing run and gun. I thought Boston was trying to run them, like, like hit them, like play mm-hmm. a physical game with them. Like, I don't think Boston's think, yeah. trying to go up and down the ice. I think, oh, okay. I just think as, you know, when Boston defenders pinched and tried to try to take a run at someone, the Leafs would chip it out and they'd come with speed. Right. I think they kind yeah. of did that throughout the whole second and third period. And uh, I think that's kind of the game it was for me. It's more so not so much Boston tried to step on their throats offensively. They tried to run them out of the building. And you could see the Leafs were intimidated at some point. Some guys were, were intimidated. But I think at the same time, that may help them kind of get their legs moving uh, and just, just make the game kind of a little more conducive to what they're, what they're good at when Boston's pinching, being aggressive, and it just presents an opportunity for them to make a mistake, and that's when the Leafs capitalize. Well, the difference is, too, is come playoff time, when you're in a series, I mean, you can afford to lose a game by trying to, you know, intimidate yeah. and throw exactly. a lot of hands yes. and rough guys up. Yep. And in a season, you're only comparing one game, so it's tough oh, to, I know. to do that. So, I mean, you know, in that situation. But going back to where you started and you talked about how the Leafs, um, their top guns are scoring, and, and that's, what, that, that's what happens when they win. If the top guns are scoring, the Toronto Leafs are winning, It's period. Mm-hmm. But as we go on, we've talked about this so many times, I'm getting a headache. Is they, they, it's the secondary guys, other than Spezza, aren't scoring because they're not good enough because they don't have enough cap room. So, I mean, I think nothing for me changes. I mean, they could win the next five games and make it a 10 game in a row. They still got to get rid of one of their big guys and invest in depth to win in the playoffs. And, and that's how I feel. Unless they do it, which I can't see them do it because they didn't do it the last five years. They don't have enough depth. And when it comes to playoffs and push comes to shove and you play the same team seven times like the Boston Bruins or the Montreal Canadiens, no matter what place each team gets, guess what? It ain't going to be the top guys get all this room. Yeah. And that's what that's what it's been. And it's yeah. not like me. Like, all I'm doing is looking at the past. That's what's yeah. happened. It's the same thing. So, well, I mean, but I, 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 it is good they're doing it. And you can't, like, you'd rather them playing well and scoring and winning. I'm just saying it doesn't fix the overall problem with the Toronto Maple Leafs. And, and what and that I is, think, depth. Yeah. And so shout out to Spets. He's been playing under But I think the Leafs' depth has gotten worse in the last year. Like, yeah. Uh, they're 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 not their bottom six isn't as good as it probably was last year. But shout out to Jason Spezza, man. Just for a guy that's forty years old, 40, 40 years old, that guy is playing fucking unreal right now. Like he looks like a legitimate, like a threat. He's a threat every time he's on the ice. And I know people say he's getting a softer matchup going against a third deep pairing. I don't really care. He's you can only do what you can do when you're out there, right? Doesn't matter if you're going up against Seth Jones or you're going up against uh, what is Artem Zhu from uh, from the Senators. So uh, Arjun Zub is not on our third deep pairing. So, <laughs> but I mean, I, he, he's, I'm he's, like, we'll get there in a minute. Let me just rip my deep pairing. Spets is doing Spets is doing a good enough job that he's even he's moved him center. Spets hasn't played center in Toronto in three years. He they never let him play center. He's always a winger, and I think this year he's finally taken that third line center spot over. He's playing with Simmons and Richie, kind of two guys that complement him a little bit better, both a little bit slower. So Spets is kind of the speed of that line, so he dictates the pace. And I think that line's been playing good uh, just because just I think that line meshes well together. Like, Richie doesn't have to keep up with Marner and Matthews. Uh, you know, it's a little easier to keep up with Sem- or, uh, Simmons and Spets and get in on the forecheck that way. I think that third line has been really nice since they put it together. And uh, one last thing on the Leafs is, I'm going to be saw Rookie, but Austin Matthews lets go uh, a clapper, a one-timer on the power play and hammers it by uh, Boston's goalie. I, what's his name? Uh, Allmark, I think that's Boston's goalie's name. But uh, you don't see Matthews wind up and go for the clapper on the one-timer too many times. A lot of times it's that quick wrist shot or quick snap shot. If he can add this slap shot to his arsenal and become a, become a legitimate threat off that uh, offside wing in the power play, I think the Leafs need that to make their power play a little more dangerous. There's too many. You don't have – the goalies are so fast in the NHL, you don't have enough time to uh, to do the wrist shot or the snap shot like that. you got to let some slap shots go. And it was nice to see Austin uh, power one through there. And I think they really needed that, and that's something I think uh, – they have to keep pumping. They got to tell him to do that. I hope his wrist is healthy enough to uh, to keep that up. Yeah. Well, shout out to uh, Trevor Moore. He has scored for the LA Kings. So the update <laughs> as we speak on this podcast. <laughs> but you guys already know the score by the time it's getting out. But it's one nothing for LA. So go Kings, go. Um, no. At the end of the day, I still think you know it's going to be uh, interesting to see how this season plays out for the Leafs, and uh, we're going to be checking back in all the time. But uh, th- nothing for me has changed. Yeah, it's good to see the guys are scoring. One thing I did notice, though, is it seems like Spezza has taken on a little bit of a leadership role. He definitely um, has. It seems like he's becoming, like, the co-captain. And I don't mean that as an assistant captain. I mean, yeah. like, you know, 
I just feel like John Tavares is, is outspoken and maybe Spezza is a little bit more. And it just seems like there's a whole nother role there. Maybe I'm, you know, what do you think about that? No, I think if you watch the all access on Amazon prime, it Spezza legitimately seemed like one of the leaders in the room. Like you didn't see, you didn't hear Matthews talk too much in the room. Well, I guess Tavares was hurt. So you didn't really see much of Tavares in the playoffs, but I mean, you had a lot of the noises coming from Jumbo Joe and Spezza, like even going into game seven, Spezza was the guy that stood up and gave a speech, right? Uh, Spezza, the guy that says you need to push a little bit more. So yeah, I th- and that's such a transition from his career because he was kind of known as a more of a perimeter player. But I think, as we've said before, he's adjust. He's one of the guys that's adjusted his role to stay in the NHL, and he's willing to do what he has to do, right? So good on Jason Spezza. I legitimately think he looks really good. I think he should get some more some more minutes. Like he looks dangerous out there. Every time he's out there, he's getting a scoring chance, and he's shooting the puck. Uh, Spets has always had one of those guys that he could shoot the puck. He just never did. But uh, just, he's just I unleashing. Just, what? I just, <laughs> I just thought of something hilarious about Spezza <laughs> shooting the puck. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, maybe we'll get friend of the show, Sammy Hall, on here and tell us about Jason Spezza and one of his stories. Um, I won't tell the story because I might get in trouble, but I'll, I'll tell uh, the pre prefix. Is that the right thing, term of it? Um, so uh, Jordan Tanner. Steve Tanner was the, used to be the chief of police of Belleville. Um, they billed at Jason Spezza when he played for the yeah. Bulls. Mm-hmm. And uh, so it's his son, Jordan, uh, who uh, I know pretty good. I played a little bit with, I guess. Um, he was good friends. or still is good friends with Sammy Hall. So there were some stories with uh, with Spezza being at the house and uh, and maybe a, a girlfriend and whatnot. So I'm not going to get into anything, but it was pretty funny uh, yeah. on what, what happened. So uh, and, oh. and the coolest thing was um, – I remember him telling me, uh, actually, Sammy said something recently about this. Maybe it was in the summer, but uh, he's there and Spez is there for dinner or something. And somebody calls him and they're like, oh, yeah, he's talking. He gets off the phone. Right. And they, well, who was that? Oh, oh, that was my agent. Oh, well, that's cool. Well, guess who his agent is or was Bobby Orr. So, he oh, was yeah, talking. I don't know if it still is now. That's cool. But, eh? but uh, you know, you're, he's, yeah. you're sitting at a dinner table and the guy's talking to Bobby Orr. Like, mm. I don't know, just cool stuff like that. Right. But that uh, is cool. What one more thing I want to say with the Leafs here is that the new pairing of a uh, of so since they benched Hall, so the the shutdown pairing has always been Muzzin and 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 Hall for the last couple of years. They put Brody over on that right side <laughs> with Muzzin, and I think that pair looks like it's meant to be like that. It seems like now that you think about it, like that's an obvious choice. I know you kind of thought Riley's your number one defenseman, but Riley may be your number one defenseman on paper, but he's not the shutdown defenseman, and that's not how they use it. Muzzin's clearly on the shutdown pairing, and I think Brody is your best, uh, your best defenseman that plays the right side. So I think that's an obvious pairing that's got to stay together on the back end. They're going to take all the big minutes against all the other teams' top line. And there's no doubt, even after one game watching it, that is such a better shutdown pairing than Muzzin and Hall. It's not even funny. So I don't know how Keith didn't stumble upon that earlier, but uh, that's a pairing that's going to stick together. I can almost guarantee it. I don't know if Hall comes back in the lineup and goes in with Riley. It uh, it doesn't seem like it. It seems like he's in the dock of us right now. He's been playing really bad. So uh, – We'll see how that situation plays out. Maybe there's some trade interest there, but uh, Brody and Muzzin is here to stay for sure, as long as they're both healthy. That's a new shutdown pair for the Leafs for sure. Well, it's better late than never, right? I mean, that's yeah. part of the game, part of coaching, and, and the players are changing, right? You can always say, well, why didn't you try this earlier? Well, maybe this wouldn't have worked last year. Or yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, players change. I mean, guys are playing better. Um, guys learn to connect with each other. Maybe it takes a few games too, right? It doesn't always happen overnight like that, especially with forward lines. But, uh, mm-hmm. you know, it'll, it's going to be interesting to see how the Leafs do. Um, I mean, I think I, I've said this the whole time. You haven't. They are a playoff team. You then, they, oh, I don't know. They might not. Make no, I do. I legitimately pretty don't know. Wrote them, uh, you know, a month ago. So uh, it's hard. Uh, the heart's guarded, Brokey. You don't want to let yourself get back out there. You know, I just got a funny, I just got a funny text, Brokey. It sounds like me and you are going to Las Vegas here, January 21st. I just got a text from uh, the pay it forward sports golf tournament winners, Ryan Cathcart. And he says, uh, there may be, uh, they may be looking for a couple more guys to go to Vegas. So, uh, Mr. Broke, are you in or what? Are we going to do a podcast uh, out of Caesar's Palace or what's going on here? <laughs> well, I mean, you better not show this podcast to your wife. You'd be in trouble. <laughs> are you sure you'd be allowed to go, buddy? That's why, that's why I edit the podcast, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, uh, I'm in if you're in. So there we go. But uh, no, um, well, that'd be interesting. Yeah. So, yeah, 
and just maybe just because you touched on it, I'm going to say it. Uh, pay it forward sports. We'll give a shout out to them. We, uh, we met yesterday, Fleming and I, and, and have a lot of plans for 2022. Um, hockey, we've got golf was a big success for us. And you just talked about it. One of the tournaments we had in uh, October last month, just about a month ago, actually. Month yeah, on the day. A month ago, yeah. Month on the day or month to day last. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Um, the, the winning team there, um, Ryan and his pals, they won a, a trip to Las Vegas. So, you know what? We've got some really good plans with Pay It Forward Sports on even winning more. Um, awesome prizes such maybe another trip to Vegas or another trip to Dominican or wherever or even some other stuff so it's going to be an awesome year in 2022 we are gearing up for it and we're going to start with some hockey tournaments and like we said we got lots more planned so get excited for that um, but uh, do you want to move on to the to the better team in, uh, in Ontario go ahead go ahead to the best team in Ontario go ahead they got okay, such so, good defensemen Jesus all oh, they're unreal yeah, so um, I mean I don't really know I feel I feel like you did Two, two weeks ago. Um, I mean, I've been really positive about this team the last two years. And, and it's even tough <laughs> with, well, with the rebuild and understanding it and everything. But I feel like now is like the rebuild is over, but the build isn't over. You're not getting yeah. rid of players. You're building, you know, and that's what you try to understand. But I just don't understand part of the things that are going on. Like Ottawa had, and you mentioned Zub, but Zub has been only, the only two good defensemen this year, two in Ottawa have been Shabbat and Zub. And, and Shabbat, they'll say, oh, you know, he's had turnovers. The guy plays, what, first or second most minutes in the NHL. He's been a stud. Mm -hmm. um, so you're going to have turnovers and stuff. And the way offense that guy creates is phenomenal. It's tops in the league. And there's probably him and maybe one or two others, uh, other defense, probably McCarr and I'm trying to think of who else. But there wouldn't be many more D that create more offense or join in more offensive plays than him. So you know you're going to have, you know, some defensive faults on that. Other than those two players, the uh, Ottawa Senators defensemen have been absolutely dog shit the rest of the – it's awful. Like, and the biggest one I don't get – and I was going to talk about this last episode, but I forgot, so I'm going to rip him now, is Josh Brown. You did talk about it last episode. I just chipped in once. <laughs> I said, I'm thinking, I you want to keep going. You know what I said, keep I was going to save it because I'm going to be talking about the same thing next episode, yeah. <laughs> which is actually two weeks later. The guy sucks. Okay, so I, I'm not a big Twitter guy, but I, I do go on it, especially with the, the, the Sens, and I follow a lot of Sens guys and their media and all that, and maybe the media doesn't say as much. But all us fans, it's, and, and you're, it's the guy's horrible. I, I don't even know if he could play a top four role in on Belleville. I'm serious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just don't he get it. Couldn't. Nobody gets it. Mm -hmm. It's like it's – like, it feels to me like, you know, let's say you have – you have four kids or it's that dad who, uh, here's another example. It's that dad, you know, who coaches his son and his son's one of the worst players on the team, but he plays, you know, top four minutes or like, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where it's like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> like the guy shouldn't even be in the, in the game and you're putting it out there every time. And it's, and, yeah. and not only that, he, Josh Brown has been the worst and the most obvious, but Zaitsev has been horrible. And I know you've been through that Zaitsev train. Yeah. Uh, Holden has been half and on. And I haven't really liked it. Mete, I feel like he could be good, but it's just a lot of times the bottom four are all playing together. So none of them are getting anything going. And the one thing that tops it off for this, for me, which drives me, and it ain't only me, it's the rest of the hardcore Sens fan base. Because like I say, I chime in with them all the time is what the fuck are we doing with Brandstrom? It doesn't make sense to me. We traded him for Stone and Sokolov, which was the, the, the draft pick we got. It's now Sokolov. Take Sokolov out of the picture. When we brought Brandstrom in, it was like, this guy is going to be one of the best defensemen coming in, blah, 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 blah. Right? And then every time he gets to the NHL, DJ's like, you know, I don't like him. I don't like him. I don't like him. I'd rather play this six foot four guy who doesn't even know a fucking stick handle or do a crossover. Rather than this guy, and this is the thing I don't understand is if you have good offense, guess what? You got the puck. Mm. You don't have to play defense. Yeah. You know what's you know what's kind of oh you're frozen here, Brokey. Sorry here. Showed it on, on Twitter. And he got the puck at the red line. There was a guy just at the blue line, and there were three other guys. Okay. They only the other team was changing. You know where their closest defense was? He was at the cert the dot. So all he had to do was pass the puck to the guy at the blue line. They gain the zone. It's probably a three on two, maybe a scoring chance. You know what he did? He fucking dumps it in. Yeah. It's just idiotic. And that's just one play. And there's been so many. It's every game at least one goal is full. I just don't get it. I'd rather see some. And we're not winning this year. I said this from day one. I don't even think we're going to make the playoffs. I never said, you know, and we're not. But then why not try and grow Branstra? 
Yeah. Now is now is the time to do it. It baffles me. There's it's not like he's taking somebody's spot who should be there or Mm -hmm. should be developing because all four of these bottom guys or five of them. Who's the fifth? There's another guy that's in now. They suck. No, Mete's in a whole. Oh, it's um uh, Delzado. Holy, what a pickup that was. (laughs) That guy's terrible. It's horrible. But you know what the thing is? You know what thing is Ottawa's defense too is is you can only there's only so many times you can you can kind of like ease a guy in and like cushion his minutes and give him time to develop. Man, you've got Sanderson coming up. You got uh, Bernard Docker coming in. Like you're gonna have guys in the picture that kind of need to fill that role next year. You know, where maybe you know Sanderson is gonna be a good player, but you don't want to put him on first first minutes right away and give him you know the toughest matchups. So get branched him ready right now. Like when you're not a team that's ready to compete, get him in, give him give him time. And this is something the Leafs are kind of learning right now with with Lilligren. He's never he's, he's the exact same kind of player as Branchum. I bet you they were drafted a couple spots apart. Like I don't know if the same year, but just what you know, they're drafted in the ten to fifteen range, and you never give the guy a shot. You give him one game, you stick him on the third. That's pairing. not enough, man. That's not enough. Well, that's what I mean. That's what I mean. You give him you give him one game, you stick him on the third pairing. You don't like what you see, and he's back to the press box or back to the HL. You finally bring him up, and you give him his chance. I like anything. You need to see, like, man, you need to give a kid at least 10 games of some some legitimate minutes, too. And it can't always be against the third and fourth line. You got to give him some time against the top six to see what he's going to do. Or else he's never going to know what that level of competition feels like or is like. So, I mean, now's the time to do it with Branstrom. You need to see if, if he's a real option or not. Because if he's not a legitimate option, get something back for him and trade him. Like, if you don't like him and you think, and you think he's never going to make the club... Go find someone that says I'm going to give him a chance and I'm going to inv- I'm going to invest some some picks in him. I don't know That's why you don't do it now that. when when it's when you can do it. This is the year you can do it. Next year Ottawa might be fighting for a playoff spot. They're going to bring Sanderson in. They're going to bring Bernard Docker in, and they're going to be the guys that need to be sheltered on the third pair a little bit until they get used to playing at the NHL level. You can't have de- those two and Branstrom in there looking for easy minutes. It's not going to happen. Give Branstrom, yeah. give, give Branstrom his time right now. See what you have. Well, no, I agree 100%. It, it fucking baffled me. And the same thing, it's just, it's just, it's like DJ loves Josh Brown, okay? And just, it's his son because he played for him in what, Sioux? Oshawa. Sioux? Oshawa. Why do I keep saying Sioux? Um, but anyways, Lewis. play for him in Oshawa and all this stuff. I don't give a shit. Whatever you did yesterday doesn't matter. And that's mm-hmm. the way the NHL works, right? Mm-hmm. It, it's just, some of the moves they're doing, like their best goalie this year has been Gus, without a doubt. Well, they just sent him down to Bell. Why? Because, you know, a contracts with Forsberg. Well, they don't want to get rid of Forsberg because Murray. Well, because if Murray's hurt, then they only got then they only have Gus and they'll have to call somebody up. So basically they have to have two backups for Murray because Murray can only play out the games. Yeah. So how great of a signing was that? I will say this. This is there's there's some good in their value. I'm gonna start with the good. The good news is Branstrom was called up. Actually, he was called up before Saturday's game, but that was only COVID precautions. Yes. Because they they thought there was good. They brought like five guys up. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, and Bell ended up still winning that night. So good on Bell. Maybe yeah, I'll really good on Bell. But anyways, um, they end up winning. That. Now Branstrom's officially called up. Like he was there, but so the Ottawa plays tomorrow night, Tuesday night. Um, and and the hope is that he gets in. I'll be fucking baffled if he doesn't. So that's some good news. Um, and then to go, to go along with my whole, you've kind of, you've already talked about it a little bit, to go along with my whole pissed off of how bad the defense is, other than Zub and Shabbat I'm happy with, is we do have, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. There is a lot of guys coming up. Um, I really think Sanderson, I think he's going to be a solid defenseman. I really do. Mm. We've got Bernard Docker. The other guy you didn't mention is Thompson, Lassie Thompson. He was a first round pick two years ago. He's in Belleville. He's doing pretty good. And there's a Cleveland guy who played with Sanderson last year. He's in university. He's doing okay. So you never know with what – I'm not saying they're all going to make it, but yep. at least there's something there, right? So, But you only need two of them to make it. Like, that's the thing. Yeah. If you and get – get well You're great. Two thing, one, thing, one more thing I want to mention about the Ottawa Senators, I'm going to tell it like it is. They've got – I really, really like their amateur scouts. I think they've done one hell of a job. I think there's been some questionable calls, but it seems like the last few years they've done awesome. They probably have some of the worst NHL scouting, like pro scouting, in the league. I mean – Look at the players they signed the last three years. They all fucking suck. Yeah. Delzato. I mean, uh, who's the guy that scored Dadnoff. against uh, Dadnoff scored Dadnoff. against Trump. When what oh, he scored that big goal against Trout six five in overtime. <laughs> and I was down five one. I had to bring that up. But anyways, that was a terrible signing for what they did. Murray hasn't worked out. I mean, any other guy that they signed that's a pro guy has name one. They got rid of Anthony DeClaire. There's another topic. Anthony DeClaire, we didn't offer him a contract. Apparently, 
The rumor was we offered him 3.9 or something, but he came back and said the offer was like 1.7. Mm-hmm. He's Florida Panthers, who's what, first in the division. He's their leading scorer. Yeah. <laughs> Great fucking job there, mm-hmm. DJ or, yeah. or Peter. Or Peter number two. I guess Peter number two wasn't around yet. Anyway, <laughs> I just, the way they, they treat their NHL players right now and they're signing them, well, I mean, they signed the other guys, but just like the, not signing the guys that have brought up. I'm talking about signing guys from other organizations. Yeah. Mm-hmm. From signing trades, things like that, have sucked. Mm-hmm. So whoever runs that, if it's Pierre, you need to figure it out. You need some help. Well, maybe it's maybe it's Pierre number two, um, the annoying one, but it needs to change in Ottawa because that's a disaster. Anyways, let's get Brandstrom up. Let's get him wheel and deal and kiss the inside of a gun, and let's get a win tomorrow. I think they play against – well, they play against Boston tomorrow, t- Tuesday night. Big game there. Big game. You have some money on the line with CB or what? What's going to – I don't. I don't. I haven't really seen him much, to be honest, no. but I'll probably see him tomorrow. Well, Tuesday. Um, maybe one, last, really- one last thing I wanted to touch on here before we uh, before we uh, wrap it up here, Brokey. We had a big trade in the NHL, and we yeah. haven't had a trade like this in a long time. Jack Eichel gets moved to the Las Vegas Golden Knights uh, in return for Alex Tuck. A uh, couple picks, and also uh, Peyton Kreps, who was a former first-round pick. So, man, that's a big deal. We haven't seen a name, a number one center like Jack Eichel move, and and I can't, I can't even think when the last time this big of a trade went down for a player of Eichel's caliber. So, Roki, how do you like the trade from both sides? And uh, and I would just like to say um, our condolences to uh, Alex Tuck and, uh, yeah. and <laughs> the worst luck because <laughs> Buffalo is a shithole. I'm sorry, Buffalo, um, but the last however many years have been awful, um, last year especially. And from everything I've read and watched and everything, something happened between Jack Eichel and the owners of the Buffalo Sabres, without question, or they would not sign off in this surgery. And the number one thing I don't get is why in the hell would Buffalo not sign off in this last spring when he would have been able to play mm-hmm. this year? The guy doesn't want the guy's what 20, 25 years, 23 years old, 24 years old, 25. I don't know how old it is. Say 25, for instance. Is he, he might maybe he's older than that, 25, 26. Anyways, you think he just wants to have a surgery that's gonna end his career? Yes, no NHL has ever had this surgery, um, the way they've done it, but many other athletes have had this surgery and they've all had success. Mm-hmm. So, and he's seen many specialists. So it just baffles me why if you're the Buffalo Sabres and your number one player who even went on to say that if he got this surgery, he would come back and play for the Sabres. Well, and they still said no. I don't get it. It's terrible management. If it was Ottawa, I would be pissed at them. But it's Buffalo. And this is why this is a bad organization, just because of stupid decisions like this. And yeah. that's why Las Vegas is a great organization. And players want to go there. He's getting the surgery. He might be getting it this week or next week. I don't know if he's already got it. He, but it's he's right trying away. to figure who's going to do the surgery right now. So, yeah. yeah. He's going to be out three months, apparently. It's approximately what it's going to be. Yeah. And he's going to be back in the lineup. And if if they get their guys back, Las Vegas is another cup favorite again. Like, I mean, yeah. the guys are missing and they're still beat. They beat Ottawa. And they're and uh, they're missing their top five or six player forwards. We, but, we uh, haven't really talked too much about the Eichel, the, the, even like the Eichel injury, but you know what it is? It feels personal at this point. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it just feels like it's got to a point where they both just said, go fuck yourself, go live under a rock. I could care less what happens to you. And it seemed like it was more that way from Buffalo's ownership than it was towards Eichel. Like said, Eichel said, like, I'll come back and play. And maybe at the start, he maybe he took this line in the sand because he was trying to force his way out. But if the kid's going ahead with the surgery, you know he legitimately means it and he legitimately wants it. So for Buffalo not to get on board and not give him that chance, it's such a weird thing. Like, even if you let him have it and he passes physicals, you get more for him in a trade. Like, you know, you get more than Alex Tuck and, and Peyton Krebs in a first. So, I don't know. Just just a weird play by Buffalo. I'm not even saying, like, it's a horrible well, – I don't like the deal for Buffalo. It could have been worse. It could have been much, much worse, though. Like, you know. Now, at least they got something for him. Yeah, they got a least, first, right? They got a first, and Peyton Krebs was a first last year. And I think Tuck was a first-round pick uh, three or four years ago or four, five years ago at some point. So, you know. Yeah, you he's get, been all right. He's been a he's, good player for them. He's a, he's a good depth player. He's a second or third-line player. Yeah. Big guy will, will, you know, will throw the body around. So, he's, he's a guy that contribute to, to a good team. How good will he be in Buffalo on a team where, where nothing's really going to go right? I don't know how that's going to play out for them, but uh, I mean, they got something and I just hope they don't waste this $10 million in cap space. This is Buffalo's chance to go out and kind of, they can reacquire some talent with that $10 million they have to play with. They can, they can get a couple of good players 
and maybe make their team, you know, a little bit better. Buffalo has a track record of blowing that money on real bad players though. So be curious to see how that plays out. Um, but, a, you know, a big trade. It's so cool to see a trade. I remember uh, I was sitting at work when it went down and I was sitting at, uh, I started a new job about, uh, about six weeks ago now, Brokey. And uh, I was sitting at a guy's desk and he's a big hockey guy too. And at the exact same time, our phones start blowing up, blowing up. So his phone starts like fucking, and he just like, he mutes it. And I'm sitting at his desk and I'm on the other side of him. I just hear my phone just fucking going off. And then it's like, fucking, and his phone goes off again. My phone goes off for about fucking four minutes straight. Our phone just fucking blowing up straight. So what the fuck's going on? We go look, Jack, Jack Eichel traded. So, I mean, big news in the NHL. Lots of guys, lots of guys talking about it. The NHL needs more trades. I think I said it last show or the show before. That shit's exciting. People want to see it. So whatever way the NHL can figure out a way to get some more big trades like that happening, I think that's good for business. Well, there's a big trade that needs to happen with one of the Ontario teams, without questions, the way I see it. Zoob for Marner, is that the deal? Well, I'd do it in a heartbeat. <laughs> Zoob for Marner. <laughs> but, you know, I still think that the, the, the Toronto has to make a big deal here. They have to. I don't see it any other way, and I don't think they're going to win. I don't want to get back on time about Toronto, but yeah. if you're going to talk about a team that needs to make a big trade, um, I think they're one of them. So, uh, you know, which – and you're right. Like, it's just anything to make it more interesting, right? Yeah. And uh, I think, you know, Vegas is going to fall in love with Jack Eichel. He's he's American. Um, yeah. He doesn't think – I don't – last I heard, I don't think he's going to play at the Olympics, but if it all heals and he's and he's ready to go and – you know, there's no chance he plays the Olympics. No chance. And so it's three months, three and a half months. I don't away. think Vegas is gonna let it fly. I don't think they'll let it happen, man. I think there's a hey, there's always a chance. <laughs> I'm not saying it's going to play there or it's an 80 percent. It might be 10 percent, but there's a chance. Well, you know who's gonna be have the, you uh, not seen Dumb and Dumber? So there's a <laughs> chance. Well, you know who's gonna be the number one goalie for the Americans at the Olympic? Jack Campbell. There's your number one goalie right there for uh, for Team USA. I like I've been hearing some talk about lately. I, I think it's a no-brainer. I think he's easily number one goalie there. Yeah, as long as uh, Shabbat makes it over Riley, I'm happy. I don't think that's going to happen, bud. I don't uh... – oh, Shabbat's better than Riley. Fuck, are you kidding me? Yeah, Shabbat's anyway. overrated. Shabbat's overrated beyond belief. Fuck, he's just – He's not him. that good. Not oh. that good. Shabbat is better than Riley. No way. Have you watched no way. Riley play? You don't watch yeah. him play? Man, Shabbat's so overrated. He makes so many mistakes with the puck. Like, he, I don't know. Dude, he's no. a run-of-the-mill defenseman. He's You're a run-of-the-mill. He's a number three defenseman. Him. Number three. <laughs> he ain't a top pairing guy. Let me tell you that, Brogy. <laughs> he, you better hope Sanderson's better than him because you're I not making a deep so playoff run with him as your number one. <laughs> um, www.clueless.com. Uh, you'll see. Spell clueless things. for me. Spell clueless for me. Probably can't do it, Kevin. Okay. Uh, Leafs. Do you want me to use that in a sentence? Do you want me to use that in a sentence for you? Yeah. All right, Fleming. Uh, your Leafs suck. One thing I do want to talk about here before I, I we, we find out everybody's gone to www.clues.com. Uh, the Bell Centers uh, re- had a big re- uh, rebound uh, weekend, um, winning both games in Cleveland. So that's good. So they went 2 0 on the weekend and they're back in action. They've got two home games this coming weekend. Um, what are our dates for that, Fleming? Um, Saturday night, they're at 7 o'clock. And I believe it's Sunday at three o'clock. Um, what are the dates for those? That's the thirteenth. The Saturday's the thirteenth, and uh, the Saturday's 14th the thirteenth, and the yeah. Sunday the fourteenth. So Saturday the thirteenth. Both games are at the Urban Arena, the CAA Arena in Belleville. So go on and get your tickets. Um, you never know; some of these guys might be up from the from the Ottawa Centers. Some of them are down. I know star goaltender right now for the Ottawa Centers. Like we just talked about earlier, he's down in Belleville right now. He could be playing. Um, you know, and there could be other guys sent down or, or brought up. Uh, one guy that we talked about earlier kind of was Sokolov, who was part of the Spark Stone trade. He is – I don't think he's played an NHL game yet. I could be wrong on that, but I don't think he has. He's um, close, eh? He's got to be close to cracking that lineup. He looks he, good. Yeah, he's really good in Belleville. Um, yeah. he, he's a guy to watch if he's playing. I believe he was just called up. There's a ch- chance he might be in the lineup for Ottawa on Ooh. Tuesday, but you never know. He could be back in Belleville next by the week. If he's not, somebody else could be. So these games are awesome. You're getting guys that are up and down from the NHL. Um, go out and see him. I know I'm going to get to at least one game this weekend. I can't wait. I love watching uh, home, hometown hockey, hockey in Belleville. And just to touch on, I went to uh, – I talked about this before, but I went to – the Picton Pirates versus Napanee Raiders. They're two of the top teams, two of the top two junior C teams around the league, um, around our area. Um, that was awesome to see. I went to a senior A game there on Friday night. Um, Tweed Oil Kings. 
um, beat the uh, Deserano Bulldogs in overtime. Shout out to friend of the show and uh, Ottawa Senators fan, Matt Lovies. He's the star of the show in Tweed. So, uh, you know, we have the Tweed guys on here, um, uh, Johnny and uh, Troy. Well, you guys, I told them, you better, you know, you're well, you better thank uh, Matt Lovies there because I'm telling you, I went to the game. That guy made a pile of huge shapes. I know I can light him up, but I you mean, know, the guys in Desert Toronto obviously can't. Lovey looks like he's been practicing some pay for sports tournaments. Like he looked he dialed has. in the other night. Eh? Like uh, he looked well, really he's good. In. <laughs> yeah. was, he, and he's playing like six times a week too. Uh, so I was talking to a couple, or we were talking to Dave Amy and he was saying he's just dialed in. So, yeah. no, good, good to see. I always like to talk about, you know, local guys like that. So it's, it's good to see that. Uh, apparently uh, we're going to get another guy in here very, very soon, hopefully. Uh, Brody Moyers, BMO. Um, he might be skating with, uh, you know, Deserano here. He was their first round pick. Was it last summer or the summer before? Summer before when, when there wasn't a season. I know they're trying to get him to play. So at BMO, might as well play some games with them, buddy. Well, we'll have to cheer you on there as well. But we are going to get you on the show, that guy. Uh, Brody Morris used to play for the Belleville Bulls. We're going to get him on here hopefully very soon. Um, and there's a big game this weekend um, in the Junior A. Uh, um, Trenton uh, Golden Hawks versus Wellington Dukes. Trenton is currently first in Ontario, I believe, if, I, if I'm not mistaken. Um, and Wellington is not far behind them. So they got a big game. That used to be a big rivalry. We talked about that in our last podcast. So I'm hoping to get to that game as well. Yeah, for sure. And uh, speaking of the last podcast, just want to thank again Matt Goody, uh, former Trenton Sting, Province Bruin, for coming on. That's uh, maybe one of our most popular podcasts ever. Probably the one I've had the most fun with, Brokey. And uh, we're getting a lot of good feedback online. And uh, Speaking of guests on the Boot Club Sports Podcast, Brogy is the uh, the football podcast we have. We have a uh, – I don't want to give away a name or yet, but we have a big guest coming on from the CFL on our podcast this week. So uh, check out Boot Club Sports and our, our podcast coming out. should be released Thursday for another amazing guest. And I'll give you a little hint. He plays in the CFL for the uh, the Ottawa Red Blacks. So tune in Thursday to see uh, who the next guest on Boot Club Sports uh, NFL podcast is going to be. Yeah, don't miss that, guys. You know, I mean, there's already rumors saying that Jan can kick farther than him, but I would, I would <laughs> Jan can't even kick half as far as him. I mean, I don't even think Jan can kick soccer ball, let alone football. But uh, anyways. Oh, you I mean, the turkey sandwich, falling, he'd be lined up, bro. He ready to go. The fall, at least. Holy shit. You put, you put, two, you cans of beer, you put two cans of beer in a pack of smokes at the red zone, he'll freaking kick that ball, I'll tell you that. All I'm saying is that, Jay, if you're going to try and kick a football, take off the boot club sweater. We don't need to get any stains on it. Buddy. I, don't want any, I don't want any stains on it. But uh, we'll check out, check, make sure everybody checks out the uh, football podcast. And like we said, we got a, we got our first guest for that one, right? So that would be awesome for the boot club sports. And uh, we're going to have many more guests like BMO and others um, coming on our Battle of Ontario Hockey podcast in upcoming weeks. Yeah, and I think we want to kind of get into more guests and less, uh, less Brokey and I talking. And, uh, you know, we do, we do plan to have some big guests coming on this year, so stay tuned to uh, the hockey podcast and the football podcast where we pump out a lot of content. And uh, that's all I got for today, Brokey. Do you have anything else you wanted to throw in there, buddy? Yeah, go Sens, go. Leafs suck. And uh, <laughs> who's going to get traded from Toronto? Somebody. And uh, visit Clueless.com, and Brokey will still look up how to spell that for you when he posts it online. So uh, right, check yeah. us out, guys. Payitforwardsports.ca, uh, Boot Club on, uh, on Facebook, Blue Club Sports on Facebook. And Brokey, one question for you, buddy. Are you in? The Boo Club.